Amen. So I believe we're back up and live. God, God is so good. The enemy is doing whatever he can to stop people of faith all over the world. And all we can say together is the devil is a liar. Amen. So let us get ready to fellowship today. Let us get ready to uh, look to the hills from whence cometh our help and let us be encouraged. I want to thank all of our social media audience that uh, participate with this ministry. We've had some technical difficulties at the beginning of this service. I want to thank you for being diligent. I want to thank you for if it's disconnected you at times that you've been faithful to reconnect right away with us. I want to just show you how much I appreciate you for your diligence. So we're going to start off here with a, a hymnal that this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to attempt to lead us in this. And those of you who are on our phone apparatuses, I'm going to ask that you just sing in your spirit and sing to yourself, amen, that everyone can just hear one voice and it doesn't echo all over. Lord knows we've had enough technical difficulties for one service, amen. So just position your hearts and let's just tell the devil that he's a liar. And let's start off by just saying, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice in spite of it all. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Now just say that again. I want you to position your heart and position your mind to just say, devil, I know what's ahead of me. I know what's in front of me, but no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I know that I'm called for such a time as this. I know I've made mistakes. I know I may not be living the holiest of holy lifestyles right now. I know that I may not be financially responsible like you want me to be and you call me to be, but I'm surely not who I used to be. And so when you look to the hills from which cometh your help and you realize that your help, people of faith, cometh from the Lord, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you've gone through. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've come out of. You can actually say, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Mm. I will rejoice, sing it, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Now just sing it again. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Tell them, I will rejoice, I will rejoice. Tell them, and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, we just put the devil on notice. He wanted to distract us today. He wanted to get us off kilter today. We may have lost all of our Facebook connect today, but it's okay because if there's one on the line today that have said, Lord, I need to hear from you. Lord, I need to see your hand. I need to feel your touch today. I believe God has put us right where we need to be. Some of us are going through some real stuff this morning. Amen. Some of us are facing real challenges today. Some of us lay in a hospital bed, recovering from surgery. Surgery. Some of us have just come home from surgery. Some of us are dealing with the home going of our loved ones. Some of us are pressing through relationship issues. Some of us are dealing with some hard headed children. Some of us are dealing with jobs laying us off because of COVID-19. Some of us are dealing with community issues. Some of us are just dealing with our faith. Some of us are struggling to find our way back. Hallelujah. But we are going to look to the hills from which cometh our help. And we're going to recognize that our help, hallelujah, comes from the Lord. So I'm going to open the window. I'm going to open the door because I believe God is not just desiring me to be the senior pastor. God is desiring me to Pro, to, to partner with so many of you all that the kingdom of heaven profits and benefits for what he has put in so many of his called people of faith. And I know I'm connected. Praise the Lord. People are connecting right back with us via the, the, the Facebook. Praise God. Not being distracted. Amen. Not being uh, let go and let down and not being discouraged. Amen. Thank you for reconnecting with us. Praise God. I want you to stand up today and I want you to realize that you are the absolute best 
that God has to offer and that nothing the enemy can do is going to take you off course. Sometimes, hallelujah, we get distracted. Sometimes we know people have been praying over our souls. We know people have been just prophesying over us. And we know we've gone a little to the left. We've gone a little to the right. But no weapon formed against you this day, hallelujah, shall prosper. We are victorious. We are the victor. We are the head and not the tail. Come on, Jesus, help me this morning. Father God, I will rejoice. I shall rejoice. I will proclaim that I'm the victor in the name of Jesus. Nothing you do, devil, can stop me. Nothing you do can derail me. I am called to be the head and not the tail. I can call down things from heaven and I can speak a thing as though it were. I don't care about all the distractions in my life. I don't care if Facebook Live doesn't work. I don't care if the phone system goes down. This whole worldly pandemic gives us such an opportunity as this, hallelujah, to just get in our own closets. Hallelujah. It's not about being in a big building anymore. Sure, we want to be in that building. Sure, we want to come together where we can touch each other and hug each other and embrace one another. But right now, hallelujah, during this time of social distancing, if we just remain faithful, hallelujah, this is the day. Now, when we sing that, we say, this is the day. What we're saying is, it doesn't matter what yesterday was. It doesn't matter what even tomorrow is going to be like. But this day right here, as the country folk would say, this right here, this day right here is got me bound. This day had me bound. But right now, I am free. And I'm free indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want to open the airways. I, we've already had prayer uh, by Sister Valerie Bryant, but I realize that our, our technical difficulties this morning, uh, those that might have reconnected with us or just tuning in may not have understood that we've already opened the airways for God. And so that we're not ignorant to the devices of the devil, I'm going to ask that Sister um, Victoria, just say a brief opening prayer for us again. Just, it seems like we've started service three or four times already. Amen. But God is so good. And every time we restart, I just feel more energized. Hallelujah. I feel more encouraged. Hallelujah. So those that are watching, those that we've lost many, and I understand that, but those that are still with us on the line or with us through uh, social media, I thank God for you. Sister Victoria, uh, open us in, in a brief prayer. And then immediately following, I want to open up for testimonies. I want to give you an opportunity, wonderful people of faith, to just share with the listeners what God has pressed you through. What has God has done for you? What has God reminded you of? What has God done to where you can say, my, tell you how he stopped me from being a murderer. Let me tell you how he stopped me from being a bank robber. Let me tell you how he stopped me from not paying my child support. Let me tell you how he stopped me from being abusive. Let me tell you how he stopped me from not going to class. Let me tell you how he stopped me from being a liar. Let me tell you how he stopped me from dying. To God be the glory this day. So Sister Victoria, if you will open us in a brief, reopen us, hallelujah. Sister Valerie, laying in a hospital bed. Sister Valerie Bryant, in the hospital, recuperating from surgery, woke up this morning and called and said, Pastor, I've got the charger on my phone. I may not be able to connect via live Facebook, but I'm going to be online. I don't care. I'm still, I still have breath. I don't want to take her testimony away. But if you can be in a hospital bed, and you can have a passion to seek the face of God. He'll meet you right where you're at. Hallelujah. I can just see a whole lot of people in the hospitals right now just standing up. Even if you're standing up on a cane, just rock from left to right and just say, God, I love you. God, I thank you. I thank you for breath in my body. I thank you for such a privilege as this. Even the rioters and the people all over the country, not just in Minneapolis, that are struggling. I want you to just stand Stand, just stand, just stand. And after you've done all that you can do, realize that you stand on your knees in prayer and these things shall change. Hallelujah. 
Woo! Watch out, devil! Folks are waking up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Show yourself in my life, Heavenly Father. In my family's life, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We know that you will. Mm. Yes, Lord. Thank you, oh God. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you for that encouragement. Thank you so much. You see, sometimes when people say, well, I don't go to church for this reason or that reason. But the Bible tells us to forsake not the assembly of ourselves together. Yeah. And when we come together, people of faith, God can show up and show out. Yeah. I want to open the airways again. This is Pastor Sonny James, and we have operated for years under the title Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries. And now as we move to the next level and the next phase of what God has, praise God, I just give a testimony because he's now giving us our new corporate head, Kingdom Builder Ministries. You see, I've realized that keeping real worldwide ministries is what God gave me, but kingdom builders is who we are. And so I want to partner with anyone out there that truly believes you're hearing from the Lord and that God has called you for such a time as this. You may not be the senior pastor of the church, but in the Bible, it says we're all called to the ministry of reconciliation. That means God set out a ministry, a work for everybody. And so I'm just so excited. I give God the honor and the glory to be able to partner with so many around the country to be their shepherd and to teach them and to mold them and to launch them into what God has for them. And I'm surrounded by some of the most awesome people that I can. I mean, I tell you, when I look at the people that God has put around me, it's not about the numbers. In fact, the word says the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Yeah. So I'm not interested in just a whole bunch of numbers just to look good. What I'm looking for are those few that will come and say, Lord, teach me. Lord, launch me into what you have for me. Whether I'm a truck driver over the road, just driving around on the road, wondering, well, Lord, how can I be effective? I don't even have a church building to be into. Well, the devil is a lie. You could be driving and say, hey, to all the truck drivers, let's together touch and agree right now. And on the count of three, let's all profess the name of Jesus. And all over the country, we could hear truck drivers going, one, two, three, Jesus, honk, honk. 
I know I may not be the most popular man of faith on the earth, but I surely love the Lord. And I don't look for obstacles. I look for solutions. I look for reasons. I look for opportunities to set the captives free. And I'm praying that God is going to send us faith warriors and faith partners that are going to partner with this ministry and help us to do just that. Amen. The, the, um, the floor is open now. Uh, for those of you, I know on social media, you can't um, connect in um, and talk, uh, but you can certainly put up some posts if you like. A lot of folks on the Facebook uh, may not be text uh, savvy, but um, um, you know, you'll find a way or you can call us live at area code 515-606-5430. And at the prompt, you can enter the um, access code 330-834-POUND, and you'll be able to join in live with us wherever you are right now. now I don't know when, when you're watching this, but if you're live right now, you'll be able to come in live and speak. So let's open the airways and give people of faith an opportunity to just tell what God has been doing. The, the, the door is open, and I want to start off with uh, Sister Valerie Bryant. Um, if she's on the line uh, she has a wonderful testimony of the time uh, while she's there at the hospital. Sister Valerie? I'm here. Good evening. I'm giving under God who cares in my life. I like to thank the Lord for letting me be here to be another day. I'm in a hospital, but sure enough, I'm going to keep trusting the Lord. So I had the chapel people here uh, call me yesterday, and they talked to me and read Psalms 46. But I'm not going to read it to you because I have glaucoma, but I can read it, but I'll just tell you what it was about. It was about refuge and strength. The first chapter of Psalms, uh, I mean, in Psalms 46, the first uh, verse, uh, it's about refuge and strength. And that's something that we all need. And while he was reading it to me, and I was telling him I knew about it and everything, and I was like saying more stuff to him about it and he was telling me. <laughs> and I said, I sound like my pastor saying that because my pastor was saying it but for his lawyer. His, his, and it's like he's telling, I'm telling him more than he's telling me. And he said, yeah, you're right, you're right. And I said, well, you know, that's because I grew up on the right path and I'm glad that I'm standing on the right path. Amen. Because without God, we don't know what we would be. So it's just that we all get on the right path. So I just thank the Lord for letting me be able to wake up this morning yeah. and still press forward with his thing because he is the most. So without him, I wouldn't be here. So I just thank the Lord for letting me be here. He opened my eyes to thank you, Jesus. see this day. Did nobody come and chat me? God woke me up. Mm. So I don't Amen. think about the Lord Amen. or anything but me. Amen. It's God. So I got God in me. So long as I got God in me, I'm going to make it. So I'm just going to it and hope everybody else get on that same path to be on that path this time because Amen. he's the one that's going to help us make it through. Amen. And I just want to say thank you, everybody, and read your Bible because that's the main thing going to help you through. So let everybody thank pray you. and get on the right course with God and stop all this right, and this will be a peaceful world. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Can, can we see what God is allowing us to experience in the midst of yes. COVID-19? Yes. I mean, if you can't see what God is doing, something's wrong with you or you just keep your eyelids closed all the time. That's the only way you can't see it. I mean, who would have ever thought somebody could be ministering to the church and to people all over the world right now, right from a hospital? hospital bed. Hallelujah. We're so used to hitting play button and watching all of these fantastic pastors all over the world. But what I want to do is hit the play button and let people all over the world witness some of you. I want to be able to hit that play button in you and for you to stand up and just say, I am the absolute best that God has to offer. I do have something to share. I am important to the kingdom. I've been through some stuff. I've experienced some stuff. You can come in, Mr. and Mrs. Chaplin, but when you come Come into my room, Mr. Yeah, and Mrs. Yeah, Chaplin. I intend yeah. to take you deeper in that yeah. word. I intend to bless yeah. you. Yeah. I 
intend to encourage you. So as you're going from hospital room to hospital room, amen, you can be encouraged because I realize you also have challenges in your life. You also need to be encouraged. You also have struggles. The devil also wants to get you distracted. But I'm here to tell you, I might be laying in a bed in a hospital bed, baby, but don't get it twisted. I am the absolute best that God has to offer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge someone here. If Mother Turner is on on the line with us, I would encourage her at least say hello. She's a quiet spirit, y'all. But I want her to just be able to say good morning or hello because what we've got to learn is people that make it to a season age, they didn't get there by happen chance or through the wisdom of somebody who'd been there, done that, wrote the book on it. Is Mother Turner with us this morning? If she is, if if she would just bless me with a hello or or something. Uh, hello, Pastor. This is Diane. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! Yeah. I know the Lord. I know the Lord. God. And, um, I just was sitting here listening, and um. Uh, I agree with everything everybody has said. Amen. And I'm just happy to be here and listen. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Wherever you are, all over the country, all over the world right now, just give a hand praise and just say, thank you, Mother Turner. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank hallelujah. You, hallelujah. Thank you, hallelujah. Thank you, hallelujah. Thank you, Mother Turner. See, everybody plays a part in the kingdom, folks. Everybody, it's not just about the pastors and these big fancy buildings. Yes, we have a role and a responsibility, but what I want to hear from is you. I want to, I want to know, I want to know what you're feeling. I want to know what God is doing in your life because that blesses me and it may give me something to preach about. <laughs> is there another that would like to share with us this morning? Um, is there a visitor on the line? Is there a guest, someone who normally doesn't uh, make it here or get a chance to speak. Uh, I want to open the airways and give you an opportunity to just bless us all and bless the Lord with your voice. Is there one? Amen. Well, I don't want to put anybody on point. Hello? Yeah, this is Amen. Bless you. Um, Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because um, I've been with you guys for about four years now, and four, four and a half years. And um, I just want to say it's been a mighty long journey, but it's been a blessing every step of the way. Mm. Because um, Thank you, Lord. today, I can honestly that I stand before you as a new creature in Christ. Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> wow! Yes, yes, yes. Just, um, I've been letting the word that I've been hearing coming from the ministry take root in me and now it's starting to manifest itself, and I'm so glad. Because <laughs> it's, nothing like, it's nothing like the um, the peace that you feel mm. when you're getting closer to the Lord. Mm. And even though around you, you and outside of you may look and feel like turmoil, but it's a peace inside that... Amen, amen. Mm. Amen. So, um, I am so happy to yes, say sure. that God has delivered me from a lot of hurt that I've been carrying all my life mm -hmm. and yes, sure. replaced it with patience, which I've never had in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I just want to thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Bless the Lord. Thank you. Oh my. I, I want to encourage. That was such a wonderful testimony. She just left out one real important, 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 important part. We would be in church and I would have to hide behind folks at times and say, when you see Sister Riddle coming, please let me know because they might be coming to stab me or cut me. They are so angry with me. <laughs> and to hear her proclaim Christ and to just testify before the masses, look what God has where God has brought me from. Oh my God. Oh my God. And even the stuff that's still on her plate. To see her wake up every day. I'm so encouraged. She's had injuries after injuries. Doctor reports after doctor reports. Sometimes even so difficult she can't even walk up and down the steps. Hallelujah. But she continues to press her way. Sometimes I go by to check up on them. And like yesterday when I, I left her home and to see Mother Diane and, and Mother Turner and, and her daughter and herself. And just to see her making her way around. She doesn't know it. But as I'm driving down the road, tears just fall from my eyes. And I'm like, my God, what excuses do I have? How many times, Lord God, you got to keep showing me favor. You got to keep showing me what you'll do. You're no respecter of person. So what you're doing for, for the Riddle family, my God, if I just learned to be more faithful, you might do some of that for me. Speak that word, Pastor. I'm so blessed and encouraged. Hallelujah. Go ahead and minister, minister that thing this day, sister. Hallelujah. Preach, preacher. Thank you. Do you see what God is doing? God is raising up a new remnant. He's calling people out of their mucky muck for such a time as this, where they can say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. The devil wants us to believe. He wants us to look at our past. He wants to look at where we've come from. No, the only reason we look back there is so we can see how good he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there another? I know we can't get to everybody. I, I know we can't. But is there another on the line with us that would like to give a testimony um, and just share how good God is? I had been feeling dizzy and lightheaded and didn't know what it was, but I prayed, mm -hmm. prayed and prayed, and I asked God to remove it, mm. and I'm telling you, it's gone. Hallelujah. It's gone, and my blood pressure has been like 137 over 71. Oh, Hallelujah. And so, and I'm, I'm just saying, I know what he can do. Mm, yes, Lord. I know what Thank he can Lord. do. Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I, I just feel better. And it, I'm telling you, he worked this thing right on out. Mm, bless you, Lord. He worked it right on out. Bless the Lord. And I have to give him the glory, the yes. praise, and the honor. Yes. Lord, he is the head of my life. Yes. Well, the head of my life. Yes. Well, I wouldn't have a life uh -uh. if mm. it wasn't for my God. Say that. Say my that. God. Mm -hmm. and, and I'd like to say one more thing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're raising your children and they're little and life is happening, God always sends some help. He always sends some help. And mm -hmm. My kids were little and my husband was gone. But listen, God sent a nurse, a nurse. Mm. And every Sunday or Saturday, 
she would put a hundred dollars in my pocket. Mm. And I shared this with the pastor. And before I left the shelter, I had twelve hundred dollars in my pocket <laughs> for my new home. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you, I know what God can do. Bless you, Lord. And he has worked it out. Thank you. I'm telling you, he's worked it out. And Thank let me Lord. just say this. My son and my daughter are 35 and 36. And praise God, none of the things that they had to go through has stopped them from being godly, a godly man or a godly woman. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And this Thank is why I love the Lord, because they love him. Mm. They yeah. love him. Mm. Oh, my son calls me every day to give me a word and a verse. Oh, and I just, I love it. I love it. Bless the Lord. So he, he can do it now. Yeah. He can do it. Bless him, Don't let anybody let tell you how different. Mm, bless he can the Lord. do it. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <I think> Woo! <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. 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 Oh my God. Oh. It is amazing when when we oh when we have a change of dial, just a slight change in our dial system of how we think and how we move. When God moves in us, he supplies our every need. Amen. The challenge for us is to recognize that all he does for us it actually is him doing it. So then when right. we get an opportunity to bless the kingdom back, we should take every yeah, opportunity man. to do so. Well, I tell people yeah. all the time, amen, to, you know, be a cheerful giver. And they be like, well, I done been to some churches where the amen. pastor this and the pastor that. Well, I don't drive the car that I drive because of any of you. I drive the car be that I drive because of God. Amen. amen. And so amen. we are faithful here in this ministry. So if any of you haven't been able to be faithful, if God has blessed you, just like Sister Orso just said, he blessed you with just enough. He blessed you with exactly what you needed. I want to encourage you to go to our fundraising app, um, dollar sign, launch the kingdom. And even if you can only give a dollar, prove the devil wrong. See, the devil wants to keep you bound and confound, even in your giving, even in the things that you do. There's somebody that you Amen. haven't forgiven. There's somebody that's made you angry. There's somebody that's made you so mad you could spit nails at them. Pray for them. Oops, there's a challenge today. Amen. How Amen. about forgive yourself? Someone right now under the sound of my voice might be incarcerated or like Sister um um, Valerie, you might be in the hospital. Stand up and just encourage yourself. Stand up and tell somebody, tell one of the nurses coming in about your King Jesus. Tell, tell somebody that this has hindered me, but it ain't stopped me. This has delayed me, but it's not denied me. My God, he's looking for a new remnant. Father God, I'm just so grateful for this day. Now, oh God, take your word. Just take one small nugget of your word today and plant it so far in the pit of my soul that it take root. And then it began to manifest itself through my earthly vessel. Oh God, that you get all the glory, that you get all the honor. Open our spiritual eyes, open our spiritual ears that we can hear from heaven, that we can bless the kingdom and set the captives free. It is in Jesus' name that I thank you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, oh my God. If, if, glory, I could, glory to God. if I could just be honest with all of you today, if I could, I would just have a, 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 a testimonial service today. But I know God has a word for us. But I'm telling you, I feel so encouraged. We're not in a big fancy building. Heavens, I'm sitting here in a room with just a little bit of nothing around me. Hallelujah. But I feel Hallelujah. so encouraged. Have you ever been in a place Thank with a you, whole Father. lot of people around you, yet you still felt alone? Have you ever had a whole lot of people yeah. calling you friend, but you still feel alone? 
Have you ever been a part of a community where everybody grills out, but you still feel alone? My God, I want to tell you today, you are not alone. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Thank you. You are the head and not the tail. And so as I was preparing at the end of last week, um, the Lord really touched my heart with a message that I believe if I allow that word to go in and pierce the areas that need to be in me, that I can be a better, a stronger, a more faithful man of faith. And my prayer today is that many of you will stand up and rise up this day and say, the name of this sermon is called, It's Time. It's my time. It's my time. You see, what we have to do is we have to stop believing the lie. We have to stop saying, Sister Valerie said it best. Well, I'm not able to read it to you because I have glaucoma, but I right now. But guess what? The prison is just full of mortar, just walls of a different color. You have family members. They just act maybe a little different than grandma used to act. You have people around you right now that need the word of God that is brewing up inside of you. But the devil would want to keep you bound and say, well, you know, you were a fornicator. Well, you know, you were a liar. Well, you're in here because you robbed a bank. Well, all of that might be true. But you can look now and say, it's my time now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I'm so encouraged because the word of God just takes me to a whole nother level. Sometimes I've read something over and over and over again. And that next time I read it, hallelujah, God just downloads something in me so rich. He just makes me really see it even more clear. He takes me to a whole nother level. Is there anybody listening today that's ready to go to a whole nother level? When I think about my mother-in-law, Emily Stewart, and I think about all the challenges that she's faced not just recently, but even over the years. And I'd see how she's downloaded into my wife. Sometimes I would get frustrated and tell my wife, now don't act like Emily. And then at times I feel the Lord just slapping me on the hand and say, you better be grateful that she has some of that in her. You better learn to sit down and keep your big juicy mouth closed and be quiet and hear what they're talking about. Instead of thinking you're the boss and you run your mouth all the time, you ain't you ain't busting a grape. So I want to thank God for all of the examples that he's given me, that he continues to give me. But the best example he gives me is through the word of God. Amen. So those of you who have your word today, I'm going to ask that you go to the book of Luke. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to set a precedence for those of you who are watching. I used to dislike it when I would go to churches and the, and the man or woman of God would splatter out scripture and verses. And you could see people fumbling through the Bible, not even knowing where those pages were. By the time the pastor or the man of God read the, finished with the scripture, the folk are still looking for the word. God's calling us to be on one accord. God's telling us to set our agendas, personal agendas aside and get on his. So the book of Luke, if you, and I want to show this, I don't know how to do it, but. I'm not really tech savvy. You start at the beginning of your Bible and you flip pages toward the back. There's the Old Testament in the beginning of the Bible. It starts with Genesis. And then you come to a New Testament. And when you get to the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, you go to chapter 10. And we're going to start at the 25th verse. I just want to recap briefly and then get into the closure of this message. I can hear pages rumbling. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, God doesn't want to get ahead of you. God wants to walk with you. God wants you to be on one accord. God wants you to be right there where he is. So how do we teach one another but by that same example? So we're coming from the book of Luke. 
We're in the 10th chapter. And then we're going to start with this parable, with this example, in the 21st, 25th verse, and it reads, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered, saying, Thou shalt love thy, the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. Now, this is part two from last week. Last week's title was, It's Time for a Checkup from the Neck Up. And so as we read this, and we get to the final part of it. My prayer is that you will be encouraged today like never before. You will realize that you have a job to do. You will realize that it's important that we learn to stay in our lane. God is brewing up a ministry in many of you people of faith right now under the sound of my voice. You already know that God is giving you a special work, not just the pastors, but God is giving you a special work. But you need to know when it's your time. And I want to encourage you. I want you to be able to say, it's my time. It's my time, my but I want you to be able to wait until time. God releases you. And when it is your time, I want you to launch to the front of the line. Sister Riddle said it best this morning. She said, I couldn't articulate it any better. I've been with the ministry for four and a half years. And just now, it's like you've been asleep and all of a sudden, somebody turn on the light and your eyes open up. And it's like, whoa, I'm laying in a bed. Oh my God, I have drapes over there. Oh my goodness. They've been there. All, it's always been in you. It's always been there. But it doesn't mean a hill of beans until like Sister Riddle, you wake up and say, my God, <laughs> my God, I see it. I see what you're doing. I see what you've been preparing me for. And then you can say, it's my time. Hallelujah. So I pray that this Hallelujah. word goes into your spirit and really, really blesses you today. So in verse 28, and he said unto him, thou hast answered right this do, and thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? See, back in verse 27, he says, um, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. See, when we live based on the principles of the gospel of Christ, Jesus isn't saying, when you came to me, you were living perfect. He's not saying that. What he's saying, though, is as you, like Sister Riddle, go about your journey, go about your life, the, the time is going to come when your eyes have been made open. The time is going to come that even though you may sit in a prison cell today, I'm preparing you today for your tomorrow. You see, I'm putting word in you. I'm giving you life and I'm giving you life in abundance. You see, the Bible says that Jesus came that we might have life and that life more abundantly. So in here, what does the word of God say? He said unto him, thou hast answered right. In other words, you now have it. You now have the formula for success. He then gives him instructions. He says, this do and thou shalt live. My God, my God, it's not about your title. It's not about your education. It's not about your riches and glory. Heavens, I don't care how much money you have. Give it away. I don't care what you do with it. Bless the kingdom of heaven and watch. You, you won't have enough hands to keep all that he'll bring back to you. What did Sister Orso say? They, the nurse came in on Saturday and Sunday and for a number of weeks just blessed her with $100. And I would imagine at the end of 10 or 12 weeks, she had just the right amount to do what it was she needed to do. That's called living your best life. You don't have to worry about where things are coming. You don't have to worry about how you're going to be blessed. You don't have to focus on any of that stuff. You just live your best life according to the gospel of Christ. And I want to tell you, 
you shall be blessed. Press down. Shaken. I mean, they think they're shaking at a club. But God, what he will do for you, let me tell you, don't get it twisted, shortcake. God, what God has for you, it's in its abundance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. He says, do this, this you do, and thou shalt live. Now watch this. So once you recognize what it is that you need to do, you can't live your best life until you what? Do it. How many of you know the word of God? I'm talking to somebody today. Oh, we had a whole lot of technical difficulties at the beginning of this service. Oh, and a lot of people on Facebook, they were cut off and didn't know if they could cut back in. But those that have, many of you aren't able to speak to us right now. There are some of you on the phone line right now and you just choose not to speak. That's okay too. But this is the day that the Lord has made. Somebody is going to rejoice and be glad in it in spite of where they are, in spite of where they've gone, in spite of what they've gone through. Hallelujah. Somebody is ready to look to the hills from which cometh they help because they're realizing today that their help cometh from the Lord. Somebody is saying, Lord, what must I do? And he's saying, you already know what to do. You do it and you shall have life. You shall live. You shall get everything that you need, Sister Orso. I don't care if you're in a shelter. If you need a hot spot, I'm going to bring a restaurant right by you that's going to have free Wi-Fi. If you need laundry done, he's going to encourage somebody to open up a free laundry service. If you don't have a ride to and from work, he's going to send somebody that's going in that direction. Hallelujah. He says, this do and ye shall live. Hallelujah. So watch this in this parable. It comes back down because he says, okay, honor God. He's talking about God, but then all of a sudden he flips the script on his church and he says, and thy neighbor as thyself. Now watch this. Everything else is holy, holy, holy. Then he brings it down to practicality. That's why when we read and teach the word of God, I believe, I can't speak for any of you. I know a lot of times we choose a church that has a big fancy choir because we just want to be in the midst of woo, woo, whatever. I can't sing. But what I can do is share the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ with you. What I can do is encourage that ministry that's laying dormant in you. I can, I can speak to that thing. Sister Riddle didn't give another part of her testimony. I was at a car wash one day, and she's just, oh boy, she just had a terrible time that day. Pastor, I can't do this. Pastor, I don't, Pastor, I'm not as smart as other people. Pastor, I just, and I looked at her, and I told her, I said, I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to you. See, I'm not going to entertain what's right in front of me. I'm looking to the hills from which cometh my help. And my help cometh from the Lord. See, that's why the Bible tells us that we should speak a thing as though it were. See, had I agreed with Sister Riddle four and a half years ago, then I believe I would have hindered her testimony today. Mm. Boy. Mm -mm -mm. My God. Hallelujah. See, you can't look Hallelujah. at things how they look. you got to know and believe and trust what God is sharing with you and showing you. Now, sometimes it gets twisted because we add a little bit of ourself in there. But God understands our heart. Amen. So watch what Jesus does Amen. in this parable. And I pray we're going to get through this today. We will. But please pray for me as we go through it. And he says, but he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, this is verse 29. And who is my neighbor? <laughs> See, sometimes we just get so wrapped up in our craziness. We ask the most silliest questions. Now I can testify on myself. Okay. You already know what God is calling you to do. You're mad at somebody right now. 
You angry with somebody. Yeah, they were dead wrong, flat out wrong for what they did. But where's the forgiveness? See, you know the word. You know what God is calling you to do. But he says, do it. Don't be hearers of the word. Be doers of his word. If you want, like Sister Orso, to receive the financial blessings, why not try being a financial blessing? I mean, why not try it? What's the worst that can happen? See, I want to partner with God because he's always partnered with me. God was never the problem. I was. God is not the problem. I am. See, we want to be reminded sometimes of where we didn't come from. God ain't interested in all that without one key principle. Where can I send you? <laughs> what can I do in you? Hallelujah. So watch this in verse 30. We're getting to this parable here. This example in the gospel of Christ in the book of Luke chapter 10. We're now in verse 30. And Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell amongst thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now watch this. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. You see, there are know-it-alls around us every day. When you look at our political structure the way it is, and don't worry, I'm not going to turn this into politics this morning. But when you look at this political climate, the left makes you yell at the right. The right ain't happy with the center. When do we talk about God? When do we when do we not get on our knees and just say, Lord, whoever is in office as nice or as nasty, it doesn't matter because they're in my country. They're ruling and reigning in my country. So according to your gospel, you're going to heal my land. You're going to bless my prayers. You're going to hear from heaven and you're going to heal the things around me. So as long as you've got me here, Lord, then I know there's hope for the rest of this city. I know there's hope for the rest of my neighborhood. I know there's hope for the rest of my town. You see, if the rioters being so angry with what happened to the Floyd family, and they may be, and I'm with you there as well, I'm angry as well. And I'm not saying you can't come to my neighborhood. Come, you can go to every neighborhood if you want. But what I'm going to teach you when you come to my neighborhood is keep your mouth closed. Let You can bring 100,000 people to my neighborhood. You don't have to throw one brick. You don't have to curse out anybody. If you want to show strength, just come in numbers and keep your mouth closed. And trust me, the whole world will take notice. My God, look at all of those people sitting there touching and agreeing with something nasty that just happened. But guess what we're not going to do? We're not going to hurt some innocent person. We're, two wrongs don't make a right. One bad evil don't justify mine. You see, when we're looking in the Bible and we're asking God to teach us what it is he would have us to do, he's never going to take you off point. He's never going to take you off your character. He's never going to take you off. And I've had to learn that the hard way. I live in a community that a lot of people say is worse than Selma, Alabama. Folk just act a certain way because they can, because of the color of your skin. And I've been so mad and angry. Every time I show up at a meeting, they go, oh, my God, here he come. But what I've had to learn is my biggest strength, my biggest weapon lies on my knees. And now slowly but surely, some of those folk full of lies, full of nonsense are being blessed to move on. Bless the Lord. 